picture this. Alps, once again. <laughs> <laughs> with a small tuntuna in my backpack and a hat with a peacock feather. I am waiting for you know who. Suddenly I see a distant figure walking towards me. Could it be Aishwarya, Kajol, Vipasha? As the picture, as the figure grew nearer and nearer, suddenly I found a tap on my shoulder. Papa, Papa, wake up! <laughs> that was my six-year-old ruining my daydreaming <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon siesta. I woke up and saw there was no Aishwarya, Vipasha, Kajol. Only my six-year-old, excited, you know, with his heart beat up. Papa, come fast! There is someone at the balcony. Eh? Someone at the balcony. Someone at the front door makes sense. Right? So I walked in and saw there was a small little white colored pigeon. Obviously, a little scared. In one corner, look up. My son said, Make it go away, make it go away. He said, Wait, wait, wait. Let's see what's going on. Why the pigeon is in our balcony? Right? So I just saw. I could see. It was a little scared, it was shaken up, it was shivering. So I thought maybe it's lost its flock <coughs> away from the mother or I don't know what. So I told him, why don't we help this bird? Go get a small bowl, put some grains on it. He was very excited to help me. Yes, yes, yes. He brought in some rice and wheat. We kept it there. After a few minutes, we saw it slowly came out of the corner, picked some grains went back into the corner again. Then I asked my son, why don't you go get a small bowl of water? Maybe he's hungry or thirsty. So he bought a small bowl of water. He picked a few drops again. And as we were watching, thinking what to do, it started fluttering all over again, up and down, up and down, scared. <coughs> then he saw from behind the balcony, the neighborhood bully cat, black color one, trying to peep and see if the pigeon is still there. Ah, now I understood. The pigeon got scared looking at the cat. So I told my son, see, the cat is scaring the pigeon, right? So the cat is the bad guy. The pigeon is the good guy. He's trying to help and, you know, save his life. That's why he entered our balcony. My son was, yes, he went and brought his small stick that he plays with. And he tried to show away the cat. The cat <coughs> Then we allowed the grains and the bowl of water to stay in the balcony for some more times. Then we forgot about it. Half an hour later, we came back and saw in the balcony the pigeon was gone. You see, once you're a postmaster, everything becomes a speech. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. So coming to the vital aspects, today's education session, vital aspects of speech and delivery. Let me just uh, Right now, I hope everybody can see it. There are two aspects to a speech, as we know it, right? The speech, the speech itself, the art of the speech, preparation of the speech, and the delivery of it. Let me touch upon what are the vital aspects of a speech, speech preparation, and speech delivery. Timer, please note, it's 14, 15, and 16. So, coming to the Vital aspects of speech. V here stands for visualization. How many of you visualize a scared pigeon in a balcony, cooped up, shivering, and trying to pick some grains and drink some water, and the cat trying to peep and see if the pigeon is still there, and my son driving away the cat? Right? That's the power of visualization. So when you see something, Right? You visualize and you visualize using one technique. I like this technique more. There are many more techniques that will come across as you progress along your journey of Toastmasters. One technique that I personally find it very useful is five wives, one husband. Who is this sexually opposite of Toastmasters? <laughs> five wives and one husband. Right? The five wives are who, why, when, where. Uh, and one husband is how? Oh. So if you see the way I visualize, 
or rather I, I made you visualize of what exactly happened. I used all of these elements at various times and took you on a journey with me. I made you visualize. Getting that? That's the most important aspect before even you think of attempting a speech or writing a script for a speech. You need to visualize first. When you visualize, it becomes more clear inside your head and then you'll be able to make the audience join you. Yeah. So the next aspect as you visualize is improvisation. <coughs> One technique for improvisation is what is called as progressive elaboration. Progressively elaborate from point A to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Yeah? So, if you see, one way of telling that, telling that is adding humans. I'll come to that point as well, right? So, I could have finished the story that I said, a pigeon came, my son drove away, and I went back to school. <laughs> That's what happened, right? But did you see how I made you visualize how I improvised and made it look like a story? Because, like I said, to a Toastmaster, everything is a story, right? So, when you move on from visualization to improvisation, you can time it by adding <coughs> various emotions, by the way of, you know, making it a serious message or a laughter, evoke laughter, humor. You can time it where you want to put those kind of pieces and generate or expect to generate what kind of reactions. Yes? And then articulate. This is where, after all these stages, you are ready to write your speech. Then you put on your words, articulate, simulate, metaphors, make it humorous, right? Like for example, instead of saying, that's unbelievable. Not that there is anything wrong with that statement called that's unbelievable. It is true because it's unbelievable. You can also say his statement was as true as Salman Khan confessing on national TV that he's about. <laughs> yeah? That's unbelievable too, isn't it? So you articulate it, and how do you articulate it? By way of your language. God created humans and humans created language. And that's how the differences began. I think, I feel your moods, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, and everything else, and difference of opinions, points of views, and arguments, and for and against, like we did last week. Yeah? So that's the power of language. So these are the five vital aspects of speech preparation. So when you come to the stage of articulating what is it that you wanted to say, and use the right appropriate mix of the language, your script is ready. So first, like I said, reverse peeling of the onion, not the peeling of the onion. When you peel the onion, there is nothing except tears in your eyes. But reverse peeling is your idea, your central idea. What is it that you want to convey and add to it and add to it and add to it and package it in the form of a speech. Now your speech is written, ready to be sent to your mentor or you can mentor it yourself, self-mentoring, whichever way that works for you. Then comes the most important part of it, the delivery. Yes? Okay. Now what are the vital aspects of delivery? <coughs> Even before I go to the uh, delivery part of it, let me just summarize the recipe. Right? The recipe for vital aspect of a speech is to construct your speech by visualizing it in vivid terms, improvise it, time it, to add various emotions by articulating clearly using language as an important ingredient. Which is ready. Yes? Now, you need to deliver it. Now, under delivery, V is your vocal variety. When I say vocal variety, your voice. Your voice is your greatest weapon. Your voice driven by your vocal cords are just like any other muscle of the body. The more you use it, the more powerful it becomes. For example, biceps and triceps and quadriceps and all those things. Don't look at my family pack. I don't do all that. 
<laughs> vocal cord exercises. So your voice is a perf uh, you know an important weapon of your body, and the more you use it, the more powerful it becomes. Like for example, a pilot, the strength of a pilot is measured by the number of hours they put in in the cockpit, actually trying to take off a plane and land a plane. Your efficiency and effectiveness of being a Toastmaster in the fraternity is determined by the number of minutes to be converted to hours that you spend on stage. I have come across people who just come every week and sit and six months they are not given a speech. They like being there and clapping for somebody else. Not that there is anything wrong with it, but that's not your purpose, is it? So when you come there, don't just sit there, like when Toastmaster Vanita says, volunteer, please volunteer. She doesn't have to pray that it has to be a woman, right? It doesn't have to be like that. So just come on and stand on stage and trust me, trust me if you are scared, yes, right now I am too. I don't know if I am making sense. I don't know if you are absorbing what is it exactly that I wanted you to absorb. I don't know. So I am scared as you are too, but there are techniques to hide that. If you fumble, like our Toastmaster of the day said, you make a fool of yourself, that's perfectly fine. This is the safest environment that you can find where you can experiment with anything and everything so that when you walk out of this door and make a pitch, talk to people like this in your organization, they will be like, wow, where are you from? All you can say is Toastmasters. <laughs> right? So that's vocal variety. So when I say voice, your vocal cords, right? Amitabh Bachchan, Dr. Raj Kumar, S.P. Vathrovanen, Yesudha, Sata Mangeshkar, Asha Mosle. Did their voices resonate inside your head? That's the power of voice. So, when your speech is ready, you can find out which requires what kind of emotion and you can evoke those emotions by way of your voice. So, when you got that to that point, the next I becomes Interesting, when your speech has enough scope and vocal variety, it automatically becomes interesting, isn't it? I am here to give an education session, you may have find it interesting, yes? So when there is a high, low, I am raising my voice, low in it, I am trying to make a point, I am asking you a question, are you with me? Are you? Are you with me, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. It automatically becomes interesting. And when it becomes interesting, you, by way of telling your story, that's why Toastmasters says, personalize a story, tell your story, not a story. Once what happened when my friend was traveling, nobody is interested. What happened to you? What did you learn out of it? How did you gain from it? By applying these techniques. What happened? Why it happened? Where did it happen? At what time it happened? Right? How did it happen? So personalize your story, even if it's not yours, you could still own it up and make it personalized as yours. Because, like I said, you guys, everybody sitting here in the room, when I started off, you were with me at Alps and imagining yourself, when I was telling a story about myself, you are imagining yourself waiting for whoever it is that you are waiting for and ultimately you found a black cat and a pigeon. Yes? So, when you make it interesting, the T becomes transport your audience to wherever it is that the speaker wants to transport. <coughs> That's the power of your voice and making the speech interesting. Transportation. Yes? When it's transportation, it's automatically appealing. Oh yes, sounds interesting. Maybe I didn't know. For example, how many of you knew today, before Praveen pointed out about Machiavellianism, I knew only called, you know, uh, manipulation. And I always, uh, kind of, my view was, he was a very negative person and a manipulative person who tried to make people do what they didn't want to do to satisfy his needs, right? That's what he propagated. So I had a different opinion of him. But then again, I had to change my opinion because he, with his words today, transported me into his viewpoint where it was interesting for me, I got transported <coughs> yeah, and then it was appealing to me. 
that's the power of your words that's the power of your vocal variety that's the power of your story when you personalize it the way you see anybody can see match your way the way they want to see but what the way he saw and the way he portrayed using visual aids that satisfied the requirements of cca but at the same time all these things happened as well i felt so yeah so obviously your speech will end up likely at the end that's the last aspect of the listing for example for delivery this is this is my my favorite example i always quote to summarize all these things right so to summarize all these things let us take a simple word yeah called oh my god we all know of navarasas of the dance form any dance form that you take it's all about emotions so let's let's let me emote by giving an example let me emote with my voice adbhutam adbhut rasa surprise wonder oh my god yes i am god it was shaken we use it in your speech hasyam <laughs> oh my god i felt never felt like this in my way in my life before you laugh with me be but some disgust oh my god that was the repulsive sight that i've ever seen in my life yes i'm just standing here i'm not dancing but i'm emoting in my voice karuna sorry oh my god i feel so pity for that tinju dog on the street which was bleeding because a car hit it and went away do you feel the sorrow too raudram anger oh my god if i were to have a gun in my hand i will shoot him dead right here right now did you feel the anger in my voice you can use all that how you use it you plan it yeah that's the example and the recipe in this case is when your speech has the required amount of vocal variety it will be automatically interesting to listen as your story has the ability to transport the audience to a different level by uh, and be appealing to listen and it shall be lively as well thank you